Have you ever wondered, what should I put in my studio? What exactly do I need to get started? Well, you came to the right place because today I'm going to walk through my own studio and show you all the things I have. Hi, my name is Kobe James. I'm a music producer and I teach people how to make beats and grow. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is the Yamaha HSH speakers. Now, these speakers are really nice. I've had them for about seven years now. These things have run very well. They run long and they last very long. The thing I like about it is just the quality of the sound is really nice. Now, these aren't the only options. There are such things as KRKs, but I personally love the Yamaha HS8s. And they also have in the back, they have an XLR cable, and that's what you need to plug into the interface so that you can hear them out loud. Now for the back of it, where I said you need an XLR cable, that goes into this right here. And this is an interface. This right here is a Focusrite 2i2 interface. Now this interface, is very nice now they have these knobs here um it's pretty cool actually because when you hook it up to the mic you can actually change the colors the neon colors will come on and it creates a a, a type of different color here it's uh very nice um so this comes on 48 watts that's when you want to plug in a mic i press that this is the gain for the volume for the speakers. This is the gain for the headphones. And there's the headphone jack here. The direct monitor, you have to press the direct monitor. That's how you get your mic to work. Um, and then these are the different things you can plug in. This is the mic I have connected. And also, you can also put guitars in here as well. Now the next one I have is the Apollo Twin interface. Now this interface is the real deal. It's a little bit more expensive than the Focusrite. So you don't have to get this one, but my sound quality improved tremendously when I bought this. This is the Focusrite Apollo Twin MK2. Very nice. And this has the, the 2i2 third generation, has color guides and stuff, but this one is a lot better. It has guides here with the volume knob gain. So if you go up, the green will now show up. It is amazing. As well, they have the mic, they have the headphone input right here and they have guitar input. And the mic input is in the back here, mic line two and mic line one. So there's two ports for the mic. There's also ports for the speakers as well. Now this is the S49 complete keyboard. I really love this keyboard. You can actually change the, the color lighting. I was looking all over for this. It's like a really awesome keyboard. Uh, you can change the colors, it could be rainbow. Pretty much the same things that most MIDI keyboards do. I really love it. Now this might be a little expensive, so you don't necessarily need this one. You can get an Akai, there's tons of other ones, and there's ones that don't light up like this that are cheaper as well. Or you can get this one, but just smaller. You don't need these full set of keys. So there are plenty of options for you to work around your budget. Now this mount I have right here, that's for the speakers. But as I've realized and analyzed my height um, and the chair that I had, the, the height of the speakers are okay, I guess, but the chair I had caused an issue for me. So I don't really use a mount. I still recommend speaker mounts highly if you can afford them. This thing is awesome. This is the K and F tripod. I love this thing. You can use it for anything you need. And maybe if you wanna take pictures of your studio or something, this thing is awesome. Here is the Alonzi case. This is actually where I put my iPhone. Now, if I'm on OBS, I don't need that because I'll just use the webcam I have. You can take it off and there's actually a part right here and you can screw your camera on here and I love that. So you can screw your camera on here and then now you have a place for your camera to mount. On top of it as well, I have the newer LED light. Now this thing is really nice. It's very bright. And with this knob right here, if I loosen the knob, I'm able to pull this back up. This button right here is how you turn it on. You can actually turn up the brightness and that's what I like about it. It's a very, 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 very nice uh, small newer light. Now when I'm going live on YouTube, sometimes I don't have my headphones in, but when I have my headphones in, I use the Tascam TH05s. Now these are really nice and they're not too expensive. They're very nice and they work very well with the, with the Focusrite. 
the old Sennheiser headphones I had, um, when I plugged it into this new 2i2 third generation, not this old second generation I had, they weren't as loud and I thought there was something wrong. Maybe the interface was defective. The Focusrite interface was defective, but I actually figured out after doing further research that there's something about the new interface where the headphones were fine and the interface is fine, but those specific headphones just sound low in terms of the volume. I don't know if anybody's dealt with that with this new 2i2 uh, third generation and you're like, why is it so low? I can barely hear the beat. I can barely hear my voice. And it, it was really irritating. So I switched from the Sennheiser specifically for this interface and I used the Tascams and that solved the problem. These are Tascam TH05s. Everything I showed you, the link will be in the description below. Now also here, I have the blue microphone. This is an old Spark microphone I had for a long time and it has not failed me yet. It's amazing, it sounds clear with the focus, right? The company is called Blue. This specifically is a Spark mic. It's pretty good. Also, I have a pop filter here as well to help with when you're rapping and stuff. I used to have some rap skills before, but I decided producing was for me. So it's great because when I do my videos, I need a mic. So it comes in handy. When it comes to a studio that you can afford, now let's cut some costs. And I know people who can't afford this would love some options that can fit them. Now, for the mic, there are way cheaper mics. There are USB mics. This is a SLR mic. So don't think you need the most expensive one. Don't just look at other people and be like, oh, I need to compare yourself to them. They worked hard to get there or some people just have the funds. If you don't have it, then you don't need to worry about it. Get what you can afford and get started and start making beats. That's the most important thing. Now me personally, I recommend these Yamaha HS8s. Now these are the ones I've had my whole time producing for seven years. And once again, you don't need these. So there are KRKs, there's other types of speakers. If you see, I have these pads as well. So the pads are really nice because they take out the echoing from the room. So when it comes to having a studio that works, you don't need all this stuff. I've had this for a long time. That's why I wanted to show you what I had. So this is my studio, guys. I'm glad you are here. I'm glad I got to show this. A lot of people are actually asking me this. So I'm glad I got to do this for everyone. And I hope I helped you guys with the different things. And the most important thing is, you don't need all this to get started. You can get cheaper things than I got here and you can make just as good beats. So I don't want you to be fooled and think that you need to spend thousands of dollars out of the gate to sound like your favorite producers. This is just not true. You can still make good quality beats with a cheaper setup. So if you liked this video and you found it very helpful, subscribe and hit that subscribe button below and also hit that bell notification to the right so you'll be notified every time I have a new video. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you on my next video. Video.